Hey everyone, Dan Bernard here with another tutorial and today I'm going to cover something that might seem very basic, but in reality, it's something that we should all be doing in all of our post-production professional lives and that is staying more organized. Today I'm going to go over some standards that I try to implement into all of my projects whenever I'm working either in video editing or audio editing or post-production. This is how I stay organized in my projects. The first thing you'll notice here is we've got quite a few tracks, quite a few clips hanging out here in our timeline and we need to differentiate them somehow. What's great across all Adobe platforms, whether it be Audition, After Effects, Premiere, Photoshop, whatever, you get the option to label things and Audition is no exception. If you click on the little square here on the far left of the track, this window comes up and allows you to assign a color to the track. In this case, I've labeled it this lime green color and I've gone through and have categorized every track to what sound is in those tracks. So for example, the top track here is this minty green color and it contains all the swishes. So if I solo this and play it, we can hear that they are indeed the swishes. And if we go down here to tracks two and three, you'll see they're the same purple color. That is because both of those tracks contain hits or slaps and we can solo those so you can hear those. And those are just kind of the, the, the body impact sounds. And I've done the same with grunts, clothing, steps, and then room tone down here in the bottom. Another trick that I use quite a bit when I'm organizing my tracks in Adobe Audition is you wanna make sure everything's locked in time. So you can hit Command A and then go up here to Clip and then select Lock in Time. And that's going to put these little locks on everything. And when I started out this project, I didn't have anything organized. Clips were just all over the place, not labeled didn't have tracks named or anything. So I needed to start arranging them in some kind of fashion, grouping all the clips together that were of like sounds. So for example, I had to bring all these cloth sounds down into tracks and stack them on top of each other, but I didn't want any of them to move in time. So you can either select all or marquee select the clips that you want to move, go to clip, hit lock in time. And now I can move this clip wherever I want and you'll notice I can't go left and right. I can go up and down. I can move them to other tracks, but I can't actually change the span of time that this clip is taking in because it's locked. So we've covered organizing your tracks by color and name. We've talked about locking your clips in time before you move anything around. And the third thing you wanna do is make sure that your effects are being utilized in the most efficient way. Down here, you'll notice I have a bus track and all of my clips in this project are currently going to this bus track. And if we go to the mixer tab here, you'll see that every single track is being routed to this bus track called Reverb. I don't wanna go through every single track and individually tweak the effect that I need to put on that. So what I do is bus everything to one bus track and then label it with the effect that I want if all these tracks need to be affected by that effect. So in this case, I want all of these sounds in all of these tracks to be affected with a reverb effect. In particular, the studio reverb effect. I want all these sounds to sound like they're in the same environment. And in this case, they're kind of in a big empty studio with a bunch of hard surfaced walls. So I figured some reverb would really make things sound a little more real. So just to recap, you wanna make sure that you're staying organized by coloring your tracks, naming your tracks, making sure everything's locked in time before you go moving things around. And then also utilize bus tracks efficiently so you can add an effect that will hopefully bring all your sounds into one space. And just a side note, if you're wondering what exactly am I working on, I'm gonna be using this project in an upcoming tutorial showing you guys how to make any fight sound realistic. So stay tuned for that. So if you like this video, go ahead and give me a like. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments about anything that I've covered, or if there's something you want me to cover in the future, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below. Once again, my name is Dan Bernard, and thanks for stopping by.